Yeah, okay. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, I hope we don't have anybody here now. Okay, we don't have anybody waiting. All right. Um, let's see. So... Okay. Mm, let's go to base first. Okay. So input set, inputs. Yeah. Is that better? Or a little more? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so and then it's just a method on input. Okay, I want to find out where these methods are. Um, so... Are you talking about get parents here? Ah, huh, yeah, that one. Mm. So uh, it iterates and uh, it needs all the parents in a list, right? Oh, but currently it. we are uh, transporting parent IDs and only the main, main orchestrator has yeah. the inputs. So, uh, I think this was supposed uh, this to be an async for, iterator. Um. This is just to uh, what? Sorry. Sorry, what did you say? So, okay, so this is a problem, yeah. Um, so... But can we, like, just keep... And this is just to come uh, distinguish between two inputs, right? Um, yes. Or does it serve any other purpose? Well, this really... I mean, it's for... It's for... You need it for locking. Um, um, let's see. Yeah, I mean this. Yeah, this this tells you which one comes from which, right? Because of the set of parents. Um, yeah. But so, can we like have another like now we have origin and like we can name it something else, which is like a part, but it's part of it has a string concatenated of the parent IDs. Mm -hmm. um, the thing is, this is. Oh damn it! Why did how did this end up happening? Um, so what the idea here was supposed to be was that you would have the okay. Where's the input set context? Um, Where is it? Okay, now yeah, input set. Okay. Definitions, inputs. Okay, inputs is async. Hmm. Hmm, 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 hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, it's an async iterator because uh, you are calling it parents in inputs and parents recursive in parameter set, and you are yielding from the mm -hmm. syntax. Yeah, I think that the thing was that that get parents is supposed to. There's an open issue for this, isn't there? Yeah, there is. Um, let's see. There might be some notes in this issue. Well, here's here's the audit. Um, let's see. It was meant as a way to get the ancestry of a piece of data in the input network. This functionality may need to be removed, probably for this reason that we're hitting right now. Um, 
so let's see. Okay, so places new modification and what was I thinking? Okay. Oh shit, there's a lot of places. Um, let's see. If the only purpose is to like find what the ancestors are, do we need all the inputs? Um we don't need the objects, right? We just need yeah, the IDs. Yeah, we don't need yeah, we don't need their we don't need the objects, we just need their IDs. Um but let's like see. did you put it because we are using it somewhere that's Well let's read let here, let's re other. Let's read the rest of this real quick because I think I'd yeah, obviously yeah. I'd come back several times over the span of like, um, you know, the past last year. Apparently, I was thinking about this all year from March till November. So, <laughs> okay, I'm not sure. I'm no longer sure how critical this is. I remember that the reason I did this was the way is because input hey, sets. Could, zoom in a bit okay. More? Yeah, uh, because input sets could be created by an input network, and they could take in coming input sets and make them input sets of their own specific type. Okay, so yeah, so this was sort of the idea here was that maybe if you had a distributed setting, um, then you might have like a Redis input set and then the inputs method um, would end up iterating over, you know, like the database call or something. Um, mm -hmm. And then that's why this is probably bad. Mm -hmm. um, so it really needs to have an ears that get parents needs to be async functions, so then it could do the same thing. Um, parameter set dot inputs returns the inputs and all the ancestors. This is likely not what it should be doing because it's sort of an overloaded bad term now. We should audit where it's being called and figure out what's up. All right. Um, let's go check that out too before we make a decision here. Um, so base parameter set um, inputs. I'll put it in context. Or wait, that's definition set. Okay, parameters. Inputs and parameters recursive. Okay, I think I might have renamed that. Okay. Okay, I think that did get renamed appropriately. Okay, and this one, yeah, has get parents. Okay, that's that's what I'm wondering here about the get parents is um, it's it may not be used just for that. Um, so. Let's see. Um, all right. So I think the original assumption here that this needs to be an async iterator is correct. Um, I think, okay, yeah, so get parents. Let's look at, let's do another audit of get parents here. So C5, P, uh, get parents. Okay. So, so we call get parents there. That's the definition of get parents. Okay. Output operation grabs. Okay, the output operations use it to. Um, okay. Yeah, There's that's only one of the reason I had to put the output operations only in the orchestrator now. Okay. Well, this is fantastic news that there's only five or four usages of it. <laughs> that was about to be, okay, what was this? Did we use it, was it used everywhere here? Oh no, this is input set dot inputs. Okay, oh, that's why, okay, this is all of those three types of methods. That's what's going on here. Okay, um, yeah, okay, so here's, here's what I'm thinking about this, is that, yeah, okay, I like, I like the idea of storing all of the IDs um, that's good. Um, because, okay, so, yeah, okay, so let's, let's take some notes here on this. Um, da, da, da. okay, so let's link this. Wow, it's issue 52. That's how long ago I knew this was oh. going to be an issue. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. There's lots of back burner things here. Um, what is it? I think it's labeled XOL. Okay, well, I think we'll be. I think we can actually. Hopefully, we can knock this out pretty easily. But we'll we'll see how it goes. Um, so, can you replace the title here, please? Yes. Now it's turned it again. All right. Um, so let's summarize. Um, the um, the input dot get parents 
is not an async function. But one time, why did I not make it an async function? That was really dumb. I'm, obviously, I make everything an async function, so this one was slip the judgment. All right, input get parents is not an async function. Um, this leads to a situation where when we're in a distributed setting, uh, we don't have all the other, all the parents in memory. Um, okay. But um, even if it's async, how does that solve the situation? Well, so if it becomes it. async, then we go grab them. Um, okay. And uh, so yeah, so basically we would set up some sort of system to where we can go get those get those inputs, okay. um, and that I mean that probably just ends up being another channel, right, within Nats to say, hey, hey, where's this input? And then somebody yeah, I, responds and I says, here's this input. But won't that lead to like lots of redundant calls because almost all well, you would cache them once you have them. them. Oh, okay, okay, makes sense. Right, yeah, so as soon as you have them, you'd cache them, right? So basically, okay, okay. the the worker nodes would only end up with whatever inputs they need. Um, okay. So if okay. they never access it, then they'd never, they'd never send it. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, of caching. <laughs> um, let's see, what is it that, that saying there's like um, there's three hard problems in computer science, like or two hard problems in computer science, like caching, and I can't remember what the other one is. Um, let's see. No, yeah, there's, yeah, there's two hard problems or what was it now? Yeah, there's, there's three hard problems, caching and off by one errors. What's off by one error? Oh, it means you're, it means you've, you've, you've calculated the array index out of bounds. Um, so, and then, oh, okay. and then the joke is that there's three, there's three problems and there's, there's two okay. listed. Okay. Um, Anyways, dumb joke. Okay, so this leads to a situation where we're in a distributed setting. We don't have all the parents, parent um, input objects in memory. Um, okay. Um, okay, so uh, possible solutions. Okay. Um, store all of uh, parent UIDs uh, within each input. Store all parents' UIDs within each input. Um, uh, okay, so and this, uh, so downside. So let's make another pros and cons list here. Pros um, allows we know exactly. or else we'd do the call response a bunch of times until um, we get all of them. Um, so cons, uh, this will take up space in memory. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay, so... Okay. Uh. <clears throat> okay. Um, all right. 
right, so yeah, so we can store all the parents' UIDs, um, and then we could just grab them when we need them. Um, so, and then the other thing, though, is the the question of okay, why do why do we need this? Um, so obviously, the the output operations, there's sort of no no choice here. Um, you know, if they need, um, you know, looking at why, why is this necessary. Um, with the output operations, they might be looking at the uh, the they're they're looking at the whole object, right? Like they want they want to know about the whole thing. Um, uh, I think that in <clears throat> let's see uh, the the let's see the parameter set. I believe that has to do with locking, and that is just IDs. So let's investigate that further. Um, because obviously, so we don't, we want to, we want to sort of, all right. So what I'm thinking here is basically if we cache things locally, there's a finite limit, obviously on the amount of things that we can cache, right? Um, cause the worker nodes, right? So if you have some sort of large setting and say you had like a bunch of, say you had a raspberry. Okay. So this is something that I want to do eventually. I haven't, I haven't said, uh, I don't think, I think I had told Yash and Sudarsh in the last year, but, um, I wanted they would be really cool to use this for some kind of like IOT demo, right? Because um, yeah, basically, yeah. right? Yeah. So you've got you know you've got your worker node, and and eventually the there we would add something. Oh, a part of that system local resource management um, issue is something to do with you know how we might schedule the operations on which workers, um, mm -hmm. because you'd say you like know what we, kind of demo are we talking about? Um, so, for example, so, okay, so here's the demo. The demo is, you know, there's a camera and then there's, um, and then there's some inference done, right? That's basically, uh -huh. that we call that the demo, right? All right, so you want to do, so there's two machines. There's a machine with maybe a GPU and there's a machine with a camera, right? Now, the goal here is we define one workflow that says, take a picture, give me inference, Right, and we deploy to two machines, right, using the distributed okay. orchestrator, right, um, okay. and so, so the you know the the one machine has a GPU and the other machine has a camera. It says, okay, well, this operation goes on the one with the GPU because it requires a GPU, and this operation goes on the one with the camera because it requires a camera. Um, and uh, and so you basically you know you spin up both worker nodes and you from your laptop you know, or, you know, maybe from the machine with the GPU or whatever and say, you know, that runs the, the main, the orchestrator, the distributed orchestrator. Um, and it, it, de it deploys the, it, you know, it instantiates the correct operation implementations on each machine, right? And then it runs the data flow and, and, you know, you don't, you don't have to do anything, right? You don't have to do any setup. You basically just say run the worker node, right? Um, yeah. And so in this type of situation, um, you know, we're. I think right now you said the output operations. We have the output operations running on the orc distributed or orchestrated okay. node, right? Yeah. yeah right. Okay. So eventually, right, we might not have. Um, you know, you you might be able to run those on a worker node or something, right? And when you yeah. choose the worker node you want to run it on, you wouldn't choose the Raspberry Pi, right? You would choose maybe the GPU machine or or the laptop or something, right? Um, because to get all those, you know, you you might send one image at a time on Raspberry Pi, right? But then you want to send that image and free it from memory, right? Because you don't have that much memory. Um, yeah. So so that's sort of the the thing here is to sort of think about, okay, well, well, you know. In that case, with the with the output operations that require that we actually have the whole thing in memory, um, then, um, uh oh, uh, let's see, I'm just reading the code. Okay, sorry. When when with the output operations, with the ones that we have uh, that require that we have the whole thing in memory, um, that that's something we still want to pre preserve this this same. Um, behavior where we actually go and get all the, you know, all the input objects. But if the locking network truly only requires um, the, um, the locking network truly only requires the, um, 
to distinguish both ends. Yeah, to distinguish the IDs, then we're we're good to go, right? We can we can basically say we can basically now now I mean then then we can basically make this inputs and parents recursive just be you know give me the IDs recursively, right? Like ancestors okay. IDs or something, and then we can call it good. Um, so so acquire. Okay, so it goes through and it checks which definitions require locking. Um, let's see. Unlock the ones which require it. <laughs> okay. Um, Let's see if we can rewrite this as a way. Okay, so it basically it says it grabs all the inputs in all the ancestors and it says, okay, and this has to do with the hierarchical locking issue. Uh, oh, this is I something see that. that I think Why do you need all the inputs? Okay. Yeah. Um, so let's see. Okay. All okay, right, this is another big bug that happened. Why does it need to lock all the patterns also? Um, okay, so let's see if this explains it. So this is issue 51, funny enough. Okay, so <laughs> these Whoa. things have been around for a while. Um, so the current implementation is such that it locks all the parents and the input itself. Um, so what we should do is look at the parents and let descendants of a parents all operate on a descendant input at the same time, but not let anyone operate on the parent until all of the operations working on the descendant inputs have completed. Effectively, all operation working on the descendant inputs share the lock that the parent descended from. Okay, so, um, and this is where we could have a diagram. Um, let me see if we can mermaid JS this real quick. Um, I wish it wouldn't fill with this giant thing. Okay. Uh, whoa, they reskinned everything. All right. Okay. Um, let's see if we have anything that's sort of. Okay, perfect. Um, so, okay, so let me, I'll just do the, the same thing that we had here. So, what's this is like? Um, So we've got a git repo, and let's see, actually, this would be the git repo. Okay. All right, so. Um, two things to explain this. Okay, so uh, let's see. Run black, um, um, run, let's see. Okay, so say we have some Python source code. Um, okay. And uh, so or let's see. Uh, no, the Git repos. Uh, wait, what was the? Okay, sorry. Um, it's been a little bit. Um, okay, what was the deal with this? Um, okay, the issue here is that you end up with. Okay, where is that damn flow? Um, there's a there's a picture of it. Okay, so. Uh, you clone the repo, you grab the default branch, and you run the git commits. Don't work counters. Let's see, check out. Okay, um, I 
think it has to do with something under checkout and there's more operations, but this got simplified or something. I think, okay, so for example, like say you checked out a Git repo. Um, okay, so yeah, all right, so, so if you, if you, all right, so when you have a Git repo and we did a bunch of these, um, let's see, we did a bunch of these. So, so within this this example that we do a bunch of Git analysis stuff, um, we we lock a Git a Git repo instance says that it's locked because if you do multiple um, if you do multiple um, if you do multiple Git calls onto an object. Um, like a, a, a reap so if you run the git command more than one more than one time um it, like in parallel it it creates mm -hmm. this index file and everything gets screwed up um, and it basically says you can only run one one command at a time um and so that's yeah. why the git uh, you know the git definition is locked um okay. and so so but, oh why does it need the parent to be low we just need okay. the git definition to be locked. Right? Yeah, it needs the git definition to be locked. So why does it need the parent to be locked? Um, it goes up. Okay, so it goes. It should go up until it finds a lock. Basically, is what it's supposed to be doing. So it goes. Uh, it just grabs all the locks. Why is it grabbing all the locks? Yeah, what it's supposed to do is it's supposed to go up and say, where's the first lock? And then I think that's basically what this issue is saying, is that this is all sort of fucked. Um, let's see. But but even then, why does it need, like, doesn't that screw things up if it, like, if at some point some pattern was locked, then all its descendants uh, would need that lock, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, that's and that's what this issue is saying is basically all of the descendants should share the lock, right? So if 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 it's a descendant, um, so if we have two operations running, like if we have run run if we have checked out get repo and we have run black and run safety, these two should be able to run in parallel because it's a parent. Um, like they like if these guys you know checked out get repo produces. Like the checkout get repo operation produces this checked out repo instance, right? Mm -hmm. And 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 that should be shared by both both of these operations. Yeah. Um, but so that shouldn't be locked. Yeah. The, yes. Right. So both of them can run at the same time, right? And uh, okay. So so um, if we don't lock it, uh, both of them will run at the same time, right? Like yeah, is, yeah, but uh, the idea the idea is to lock it and lock it while both of them are running, um, and then unlock it once both of them complete, right? Um, okay. So okay. Uh, okay. there's a little bit more. There's more to this than that, um, though. So I'm I'm not quite not quite hitting on it all right now. Um, I can't remember all of it, unfortunately, but I will, yeah. I'll make sure we figure this out. Um, let's see. So, but basically the issue here is, okay, we do need, we need the input because we look at the definition to see if it's a lock required. Um, so yeah. Okay. So we use the UIDs and we use the lock required or not but the other problem is that this is sort of a cheap cheap shot way to do this right because we're supposed to be looking this basically goes and does everything but the correct implementation would look um, at the actual tree instead of just locking everything right um, mm -hmm. so this is a case where we really should be calling inputs um, and then calling the you know looking at the parent like and then deciding right um we go all the way up the tree we actually like walk the tree instead of just walking a flattened version of the tree um mm -hmm. so so all right but but just to get to the immediate how are we going to fix this right now um i think Apparently i'm not using this <laughs> yeah right um, like but... we can like hold on to it and 
uh, once we figure it out, we can add the locking network. I added it to do in the code also. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so we might want to hold off and like fix it. Yeah, and fix this first. Like yeah. Um, I think. I think though that the thing where it needs we need access to the inputs, you know, across nodes though is is kind of key here um, because you can write an output operation that that accesses other stuff, but you could also write you know it, any other operation that accesses all the inputs, mm-hmm. right? Um, so and and to deny access to the inputs because you're distributed would I mean we could raise an error and say you can't do it um, but I think it's it's something that we can solve pretty easily here. Um, yeah, we can always uh, like you said have an, another channel line. Yeah, so when I, the call gets bad and see if it's not the request. Yeah, the yeah, I think that's that's the way to go here. So, but that's okay. So then to to say how do we do that, right? Um, so like, uh, and, we can have another parameter used for the uh, distributor set which in inherits from the current parameter set and replace the get parent method sorry can you say that again so uh, currently uh, the, uh, the parameters and inputs have the get parent method right so we can have another class which inherits from input and mm-hmm. replace the get parent method. Uh, so say we say distributed input. Let's call it distributed input. Mm-hmm. And the corresponding the parameters will be distributed parameters. Yeah. And we'll replace the get parent input. And uh, this get parent will like uh, check if it's uh, it will always call to a channel. Yeah, precisely. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That sounds correct. That sounds exactly correct. Um, so let me just. Okay. So. Where is, let me just take a look and, and double check everything here. So, um, okay. Okay, we're not checking if anything is an instance of input, so that's good. I just realized, uh, or well, instance, yeah, okay, instance will do subclasses too, so we should be okay. Um, yeah, I think that is the correct way to go here. Um, so basically, yeah, take that df types, um, yeah, make this async, right? So async iter input, um, and then Right, let me just, I'm just going to write a few things without testing them here to make sure that they make sense. Okay, so then item get parents for item and self dot parents. Um, let's see. Yeah, and then you have. Okay, so. Yeah, okay. For item and self dot parents, and then from. Dict- Okay, your your your. Let me get on your branch. Okay, yeah, your branch here has export. Hmm. Let's see. Parents. Okay. So let's see. Yeah, we discussed this last time. Okay. Um, parents. Okay. So that to do. It's all the Okay, so it looks like the from dict here. The issue with the from dict, I guess, is um, is that what are we gonna do when it gets UIDs? Um, you know, if uh, it gets some I, kind of distributed yeah, it, UID. Uh, in the worker node. Yeah. All right. So. So whenever it. Receives an inputs. So currently in the orchestrator node, 
whenever it receives an input it reconstructs uh, the input uh, from the ids so it replaces the ids with the parents so we can have that in worker nodes also okay I'm just, can, like, I'm just so my, my concern though is that when we do, if we ever called input from dict and mm -hmm. if we ever called input from dict, then the, um, and we passed it an ID and the ID ends up being something that doesn't exist on that machine. The input, you know, the class instance of input has no way of knowing which um, orchestrator it came from. Yes. In, or like what, sorry, which, which, yeah, where that input lives, right? Where's the data for that? Mm -hmm. um, memory input CTA. Well, currently we are, uh, so uh, we have a dictionary in main orchestrator mapping from IDs to input. Yeah, right. But if you're on a worker, right, and you do from dict and all of a sudden, now all yeah. of a sudden you yeah. have, uh, yeah. Um, uh, the problem is the but input should good. always be tied to the input set. Um, okay. Right, because the input, so the reason, yeah, I think something, something must have happened because the input should always be Either, okay. So the thing is that the input sets, with an input set, you can create an input set that's a reference to, you know, wherever wherever your input network is, right? Like, let's mm -hmm. see, um, right? And, and if you have an input set, then, um, yeah, the input set should be able to, to be like you know it would be like you know a redis input set or something because it was it was like okay my inputs are actually in redis right in this case it would be like you know the nats input set right and the inputs are, are cached locally in memory um but they're actually you know access accessed you know they're going to be streamed to us or nats how's it going sudhanshu um let's see um but yeah I'm just, I'm concerned, I'm so I'm concerned because I'm, because we could get into this situation, well, first of all, it looks like, I guess first off, it looks like from dict right now, it doesn't even deal with the parents at all. Um, so, yeah, so, so I guess in that case, we haven't yet hit a situation where, like, we haven't yet, we would have hit this by now, right? Um because it would have been called and we would have had an input that doesn't have any parents. Um, so, um, currently it, it has the parent list, but, uh, if the parent list are ID, it just accepts that IDs. And yeah. The orchestrator node, it reconstructs that, but in the worker node, it still remains as the ID. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, yeah, and so basically what we need here, right, is a way to, to, to lazy load those IDs, um, right, and, and so la lazy load is, right, is, is, is a term for when we just have, you know, we just have the reference to it, and then when we actually go to use it, then we need to pull it over the network or whatever, right? Um, but we can't do that unless the input has a reference to the network, like the input network. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, the only input network which has all the IDs is the orchestrator network. Right? Yeah, but the, so that's what we're going to do is we're going to create another one, right, for the workers to use, and that one will be the one on you know that talks over that channel, right, with the orchestrator, right? Okay. Uh, yeah, we can we can use the current one itself, right? Do we need another one? Like we can just set up a channel and it uses uh, the, the already existing map as the database. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. Yeah. 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 Um, the only thing is, I don't even know if this really even solves the locking problem, quite honestly, because I think, I think the locking problem needs to be solved on its own in sort of another distributed way, right? Because this is all, yeah, this is all, and then the locking is sort of just like not, it's not entirely accurate in this point, at this point anyways. Um, so, because I'm, I guess, you know, I'm just trying to work through all the angles of this so that we decide what mm -hmm. to do best instead of doing something, because this could easily be huge. Um, so, 
So, okay, so we had, let's see, what did we write down? Okay, yeah, so we store all the import UIDs, and so essentially what we have right now is we have the immediate parent UIDs, but we are we know that we don't have a way to, what we found out is we don't have a way to, um, okay, so let's see, issues. Uh, we are currently storing, Um, so we are currently storing the immediate parent UIDs. Um, and this is because so um, from dict doesn't do any conversion into input objects and export only exports. UIDs. All right, so we are string, currently storing the immediate pairing UIDs. Um, the input object has no reference to any s input network uh, or input set, um, which might have a reference to an input network, right? And so the reason, just to recap, the reason why an input set might have a reference to an input network is because um, when we do uh, like Added. Yeah, okay, added will return the. So basically, we might have that because you could take it and you could make it so that, okay, someone adds an input set, right? So here, this is the input set or the memory input network context. And so one can add input sets to it, right? And then on the other end, basically, is the added method, right? And so you could, you could add... Right, like you can you can add from the from the clients, right, or from the workers, right? They they add their inputs, right, and then on the other end in the orchestrator, it comes out as added, right, and then when we send back to the clients, I guess when we dispatch to the clients right now, we are when we dispatch to the clients right now, we're doing it within the 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 Nats sort of the specialized worker node class, right. Um, is that correct? Where is that? I like. Uh, do you mean when you dispatch the parameters and the operation? Uh, then in the orchestrator. I mean, it's in the. Well, I mean the orchestrator. Like, what is the worker? The worker is sitting here. It looks like. Um, so the orchestrator node uh, looks through the IDs and find what worker is free, which can do that operation mm -hmm. and uh, pushes that input to that channel. Yeah, okay, so we just push directly to the channel. Okay. Yeah, so there's no specific orchestrated in workers. Workers like process whatever inputs they get in their respective mm -hmm. channel. Get so in all the orchestration channel. is done by the main orchestrator node. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um... Yeah, okay, so they would end up, well, they just end up with inputs. Okay, so yeah, I think the main thing here is that an input needs a reference to, what? <sighs> da, 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 da. Um, oh, let's see. Okay, so operations, operations have access to 
um, to the orchestrator context. The orchestrator context holds the input network. Um, uh, but this, okay, so we're in we're in the space of the the, the locking. You know what? Yeah, so locking is not going to get solved. Okay, so I think this is the thing is that locking is not going to get solved right now in a meaningful way anyways it sounds like right because of yeah. the whole thing where it basically locks it locks anything that's apparent um so um so we might just yeah we might want to table this um yeah i think this needs sort of a more that's why that thing says deep analysis or whatever it says it needs a what is it uh, audit an audit yeah that's why um so yeah i, I think logging should be treated differently in distributed and the other one yeah exactly right because we need i mean essentially what we need is we need some kind of distributed locking infrastructure set up here as well right um you're gonna need sorry you need like signaling and like you need you need yeah you need you need a way to do distributed locking um and we don't we don't current that's another thing that we'd have to develop right um or or yeah. leverage i couldn't i can't i couldn't find anything i don't if i remember correctly there was some i looked for stuff but i hadn't been able to find anything um sort of that was sort of drop in um yeah so we'd need locking so it might this might be a case where you do um okay so we had another case where we rejected data flows for a certain reason when they're when you're running on the distributed orchestrator do you remember what it was i think it had something to do with net sorry i don't remember exactly we have some network inputs prediction i don't remember exactly what it was okay um well we should have some input validation in here for it um yeah, we had some case where we were saying we well, we can't run this right um, right now. Anyways, it doesn't really matter. Basically, you can just throw an exception on on the run method if you detect locks in any of the um, in any of the okay. definitions, right? Um, okay. So let's just okay. So. Oh, it was the cleanup method. Oh, the cleanup. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, right. So if you're detecting any yeah. cleanup or any locks, you can just say, Hey, not implemented error. Um, and, uh, and then we'll, we'll the, I mean, that gives, that gives, that gives a, enough functionality, right? Like there's, there's, there's uses for this, um, without those things. Right. So, um, okay. Um, let's see. Uh, okay. So, Let's just sort of summary um, uh, resolution. We're going to table this for now. Um, locking should be fixed first. Um, uh, so locking should be fixed first. Um, then we need to do, um, okay, then uh, we need a way for input objects to grab their parents if their parents don't exist locally in memory and they only have their parents UIDs. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, raise not implemented error. If any definitions with lock equals true exist in the data flow being given to the distributed orchestrator um, and uh, previous case we came up with 
a few weeks ago. Um, if any cleanup operations exist within the network or data flow. Because we don't know a way to track which node they should be run on because uh, in association would be okay so we did and this was because we don't have a way to track whichever row, node they should be run on uh, the node they should be run on would be the node which produced the input in question the node which produced a matching input okay um all right all right so all right sounds good um that took us <laughs> that took us a whole hour to figure that one out yeah, yeah. um thanks for hanging in there um let's see all right yeah, um, that'll be interesting. Let me let me think some more sort of larger thinking on this in this space because um, that that damn uh, that damn get parents method. I don't know what the hell made me do that. Well, I was probably up against the deadline. It's probably what. Um, so yeah, okay, yeah. Sort of rational thinking goes out the window when you're like, oh, 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 this works. No, 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 that only works for now. Uh, doesn't work two years from now. Damn it. Um, all right. Okay. Um, so let's see. Uh, okay. All right. Well. Yeah, the two files that I have to change. Okay. Um, oh, the two files. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Like, uh, I think Sudan, Sudan Shu, uh, he pointed to me the files, but I don't know where to change that exactly. Okay. Let's see. Um, and I think. Uh, okay, so that you can get Nats installed. Okay. Um, I believe it should just be depths.sh at this point. I just failed. Yeah. Okay, so. Let's go back to branch here. I think, man, I just got this. Oh, and I got everything working in a container, actually. So that is good, too. Um, uh, but that doesn't really, hmm, yeah, I guess that doesn't run anything. Uh, we should probably be testing with, oh, yeah, OK. So basically, here's the deal. So there's a new, there's a new CI thing about, let me just write this down, too. Um, Oh, and then we didn't get to so yeah. new version of the container. Okay, so okay, doesn't test anything. Uh, cache limitation with GitHub Actions. Um, so it's basically going to be CI and then depths.sh, I believe. Um, so, and then, yeah, global dependencies, test dependencies. Okay. So I think it goes in here is where you're going to be looking. Um, and this is, I think it's, think it's had since been updated. Um, oops. in the uh, chat too. All right. Um, so two files. Okay. I think it's just, I think if you just need to install NATS, it's just the one. But when you rebase, you're also going to want, um, um, uh, let's see, or you don't need to install it in the container actually. So yeah, you're good. Just put it in there. Um, and then I think you're good to go. Um, and that brings me to, is there anything else then? 
no and this and okay. then i like clean up the code because there are lots of comments in it okay great in yeah and if you could do if you could you know make sure that you just make sure that you you've explained your decisions for things because obviously this is very complicated and yeah, and yeah okay um yeah <laughs> great Thank i you. realized that after i started working after the weekend i had to like look through the code for two hours to figure out why i did what I did. yeah right yeah exactly yeah um <laughs> and so yeah. yeah yeah i mean it's 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 this is this is it's interesting stuff <laughs> um okay so let's see um Okay, so Sud oh, and let me just talk about this stuff real quick, and then we'll go to Sudhanshu. So, uh, I wanted to ask you guys. So, I was thinking about this. Um, uh, okay, so basically, I'm I told Ogden, but I'm uh, I'm and I said it in Gitter, but I'm I'm working on the the console, uh, the basically testing all of the tutorials and making it so that we can have automated tests of all the tutorials. So, like running the console commands and stuff. Um, and uh, in the process, I'm now ending up sort of re, re, uh, refactoring the MySQL source a little bit. Um, so here's the deal. Um, I was thinking about it, and I'm thinking about it as, like, does it make sense to just store, you know, we have record.prediction, right, and it gives you back... Um, you know the value and the confidence as a dictionary, but does it really make sense to do that? Or sorry, um, or does it make sense to just, when we make a prediction, add that to the set of feature data for that record? Um, and so my thoughts on that are basically, you know, the reason why it might make sense is that you know the output of a prediction of one you know, operation like a model predict operation might be the input to another prediction, in which case, you know, then it's going to be in the feature data. And otherwise, you'd have to just, you know, you'd have to have more operations to go put it in the feature data. Um, so that's from that point, it could be helpful. Um, now, the cons is it might be it might be less clear what's ground truth and what's you know, predicted features. I think it's more in due to have them separate. Okay, have them separate. And then I guess the other thing was, and then there's sort of a side note on this is, um, you know, and this could this could have happened as a part of that or it could happen separately, is should we just, you know, should we separate out that confidence, um, right? Because right now it's like, okay, I get this dictionary where I've got the value and then I have to separate the value and the confidence it's stored together, right? We could have, right now we have sort of three, Three, we have two sub dictionaries within record. Well, we have three sub dictionaries within record. We have extra, which we're not not relevant to this. We have features, which is you know where the feature data is ground truth, right? Then we have predictions, which is predictions, and then there's sub dictionaries of value confidence, right? So this the this idea is to split it out and have another dictionary called confidence, where we store. Um, confidences for each um, prediction right um, so it's another key value mapping of you know prediction name to confidence value whereas now predictions becomes just prediction name to value um, so i don't know that's sort of that's that's the main thing that i was sort of thinking about right now and that one is i guess that's sort of like a just an idea and i don't know whether you guys think that makes things more more usable or clear or less usable or clear what do you what are you guys' opinions on that like uh, i i didn't get like how like if you have multiple predictions so i didn't get what the key is um oh so yeah well so so if you i mean so for a record object there's a dictionary predictions right um and okay. within that dictionary okay. right okay. now it's a key okay. value mapping yeah okay so so okay. basically the question is do we make do we have um let's just pull up the um, let's see plugins uh, Uh, features. Yeah, so prediction returns this confidence value dictionary, right? So now it basically would just return the value, right? And then okay. we'd have, um, yeah, we'd have uh, 
we'd have another method called confidence and it would just return the confidence. Um, and this is that, no, this is, no, this is, yeah. Anyways, I don't know. What's the thoughts on that? Does that make sense? I guess it's, it might be sort of a, it's either this is, this becomes a to-do item or it doesn't become a to-do item because I don't see this being a super high priority at the moment, yeah. but it could be sort of like a long-term usability enhancement. Um, I don't, I don't, I, I think I, you should ask the others too because I don't usually, I haven't used this too much. Yeah, yeah. Machine learning too much. Yeah. Uh, I, I think like, uh, like if we do it like this way, then like it will be more useful for like time series kind of data sets. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah, we may not have a confidence at all and, you know, a large bunch of. Yes, because like the prediction output actually goes again to the input to actually predict the next. Mm. next point in the time yeah okay so like, it can you... be useful in that way but okay like right now like i have mixed feelings like should we do it or not yeah 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 okay okay so if if there's no solid, no one seems to have much solid feelings about this. So I'm going to throw this idea out the window. We have a million other things to do. <laughs> so it, it lives in the meeting minutes and it may die in the meeting minutes, but otherwise we can come resurrect it if we want to. Um, this could be helpful with time series. Uh, but let's try some time series stuff. And then decide how helpful it might be. Um, so I guess, you know, I think that's kind of the resolution here is it could be helpful with time series, but if, if we're going to assess this, we should go try some time series stuff and see how helpful that is. Um, does that sound good, Sudanshu? Uh, yes. Okay, cool. Um, all right, okay. So now let's get to how are things going with you? Uh yes, so actually I joined in to like yeah, just give an update. Are you gonna are you so, gonna jump off Agen or is that what yeah. you're saying? Okay, cool. All right, have a good night. Thanks. Yeah. Bye. 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 Yeah. All right, cool. So just so yes, so actually I I just joined in to give an update. Like I have actually fixed the auto scaler and models. All right, great. And, and yes, and I will be like working on the scikit part next. Okay. All right. Sweet. So we'll working, uh, be working on the second part next. Okay. Um, great. All right. Fantastic. All right. So yeah, just let me know how things are going. Like I said, I'm, I've gotten, now I'm, I'm back to having some more time for the moment here. Um, so I'm trying to ramp up and, and get, get more things done. And I'm still thinking, I think with the current trajectory of what you've got and then what the rest of the cleanup we've got, I think that it still makes sense to target the accuracy stuff that you're doing for the, the beta release. Oh, so. yes. I'm actually pl planning to like get this complete in this month. All right. Sweet. Wow. That'd be awesome. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Well, that would be cool. Yeah. How's, how's school? Yeah, it's going. It's, it's going great. We will be having exams next month. Okay. Well, good, good luck with that uh, then. Internal assessments, yes. Nice. All right. Well, it was good talking to you. And uh, is there anything else you had for me you wanted to talk about or just this? Uh, no, like just just the update. All right. Cool. All right. Thanks, Sutanshu. Have a good one. Thank you. Bye. Bye.